This lesson, we're going to look at Muhammad and Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ and Muhammad. And I'm just going to read a couple things, and then we're just going to run through a list of stuff. And I'll try to give you the surah numbers if you're interested. I'm going to call on you understanding some of this about the Lord. In John 1, in verse number 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made than was that was made. In Him was the life, and the light. Life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I read those 14 verses just to bring back in your thinking about who the Lord is, okay? And when we when you begin to talk about the Lord and Muhammad, you, Islam claims that Muhammad and the Lord were both Muslims. They were both prophets sent by Allah. These two mighty prophets must coincide in all points, and never contradict each other. That's what they promote. But yet, we'll see that that's just not the case. Um, I have a couple other books we're just going to read out of for you. In, in, in the Quran and in Muslim, when you talk to them, they don't refer to Jesus as Jesus usually. They refer to him as Isa, I-S-A. And it's a capital I, but it's got a little bit of a, we would, uh, apostrophe and little thing in front of it. And that's what they, that's the name given to Jesus in the Quran. Both Christians and Muslims have wondered for centuries why he's not called uh, Yashur, as the Gospels have it in Arabic, you know, Y-E-S-U. Here is the reason. Muhammad used the name Isa in good faith after hearing it from the unbelieving Jews in Medina. In their hatred, the Jews ridiculed Jesus by calling him Esau and the, the rejected brother of Jacob who lost the blessing. They declared that the soul of Esau had been transformed into Jesus. Muhammad picked up his name and put it in his Arabic tongue and applied it to Jesus without carrying with it the derogatory meaning given by the Jews. Now, that issue of transforming and, and was move, moving from one to the other is going to be very important when we get to talk here in a little bit about the death and the crucifixion and Judas and all this stuff because they got some hokey ideas. About, and what it is is, Judas is this, and Judas becomes Christ, and all this stuff, and it just goes, huh? <laughs> so it's like, whoa, okay. So when we talk about the Lord, and we talk about Muhammad, the it's it's a very interesting thing when when they talk here about him because when you come to the Quran. There are things that it's going to say about the Lord that you will never find in the New Testament. So the Muslims say, well, the Quran's right all the time. The Bible's wrong. It should have had it, and so forth. And, you know, we'll say, well, the Quran says this about the Lord, and we'll say, well, that contract uh, um, contradicts the Scripture. Then the Bible must be corrupt, and, the, and back and forth. And, and really, it, it, I don't want to get into all of that with you. I just would rather you understand what they say. The death, the birth, the life, and the death and the resurrection of the Lord is clearly prophesied in the Old Testament, isn't it? It's there. And again, you can go to Micah 5, you can go to different places and so forth and see it. 
That is in a stark contrast to the coming of Muhammad. Now, Islam says that Jesus and Muhammad are equal. They don't contradict, they're identical to each other. Okay? But yet the Old Testament says, here comes the Lord. Muhammad just shows up. Muhammad, which was not predicted by pagan soothsayers, Old Testament prophets or New Testament apostles, no one knew Muhammad was coming. He just showed up. So now we got a problem, don't we? They're not the same. And that's, gonna, that's really the point here. This point is well taken. It is proved by the extreme lengths some Muslims go into trying to manufacture some biblical prophecy for the coming of Muhammad. For example, one, black, uh, one American black Muslim tried to convince the writer here that the word amen in the Bible actually meant amen, that is, Muhammad. The stretch, we got to get Muhammad into the book somewhere. Okay? And they do that with that, with Allah, got to get Allah in the book so that Hallelujah. That's Allah, see? And they, use, they, they begin to make the stretch. So when you begin to compare them, and I just want to do that with you, they're, the birth, their birth. The birth of Jesus Christ was miraculous and that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost and Mary, virgin birth, and so forth. That's miraculous. Muhammad's birth, natural, normal. No special, uh, he had a daddy. And a mommy, the Lord had no physical dad. The Holy Spirit and the Father are his dad. The Father is. But Muhammad had a dad. He's a natural product of the sexual reunion of his mother and his father, <laughs> the scholars say. See? The issue of sinlessness. According to, the, according to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, the Lord knew no sin. But in Muhammad's life, guess what he's going to say? I am just a human like you guys are. I'm just mortal like you. In the life of Muhammad, we find that he was a normal human being engaged in the same sinful, in, in the same sins which afflict all of us. He lied, he cheated, he lusted, he failed to keep his word, he killed, he, he did everything that you and I have done. <laughs> He's just a normal guy. The Shura is, is, is chapter 18, verse 110. And that's where Muhammad says, I'm just a man like yourselves. Nowhere in the Quran is Muhammad said to be sinless. Instead, Allah tells Muhammad that he is no different than any other man. Those Muslims who claim that Muhammad was sinless have failed to note Surah 40, verse 55, where Allah tells Muhammad to ask for forgiveness for thy sins. You can write down Surah 48, verse number 1 and 2, where again he's told he has to ask for forgiveness. Miracles. During the life of Christ, he does great, mighty miracles, doesn't he? The Lord, I'm sorry, the Lord does. <laughs> he heals the sick, he raises the dead, he casts out the demons, he takes care of the, calms the sea, so he's got control over the wind and the waves and the natural elements. He heals, he, he causes the blind to see, the lame to walk. The Quran, in dozen of places, Muhammad never performed a single miracle. Again, Surah 17, verse 91 to 95. The only sign that Muhammad could point to was the existence of his revelations that made up the Quran. That's, Quran, that's Surah 29, verse 47 to 51. Muhammad did no miracles. He did not heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the demons, or rule the wind and the waves. And he had no more power than any normal man. Okay? So real quickly, what are we finding out? The Lord is the Lord, and Muhammad is just another guy. Okay? That was after some money and some power, have some political power, have, have a religious power base, it's interesting, I've been reading Genesis 11 about the Tower of Babel and the city. Guess what that is? The city is the political power, and the tower is the religious power. And there it is with Nimrod and the boys, 
But Cain in Genesis 4 built it first. Laid down the paper. And it's very interesting. Anyway, how about the love of God? According to the New Testament, Jesus preached the love of God and was the great example of that love. John 3.16, we know, okay? In contrast, we do not have any record in the Quran of Muhammad ever preaching the love of God. As a matter of fact, neither God's love for man nor man's love for God plays any significant role in the preaching of Muhammad, the Quran, or the religion of Islam. Whereas Christianity can point to the coming of Christ as the greatest proof and example that God loves mankind, Romans 5 verse 8, Islam cannot point to anything that reveals the love of God. So guess what? It is not the religion of peace. It is not. Doesn't preach it, doesn't hold for it. Um, according to the New Testament, Jesus Christ was unique in that he was God and man. That God-man, okay? 100% God, 100% humanity. You know what Muhammad was? Only a man. There's no proof. When you study the sermons of the Lord, like the Sermon on the Mount, you find that Jesus was the greatest speaker who ever lived. Even his enemies had to confess that no man ever spoke as he did. There in John, we're studying in John there, and... The temple guard is sent to get Jesus, and they come back empty-handed, and the chief el priest and our elders, and they go, where is he? And they go, man, nobody talk like him. We ain't touching him. And guess what about Muhammad? Well, when you turn to the confused speeches of Muhammad, as found in Quran, you do not find anything outstanding. There's nothing which matches the beauty, substance, or style of the way that Jesus preached the gospel during his lifetime. And we look next seminar time about with the Quran and the Bible, you will find that the Quran is so confusing. You'll notice I got this thing way down here. It is so confusing. It, there, there's no flow of thought to the Quran at all. It jumps. Where the scripture, you start in Genesis 1-1 with the beginning, and you end in Revelation with an ending, don't you? And you've got a wonderful story that's, and it's not a story in a, you know, a made-up thing, but a wonderful picture of the attributes of God being put on display and what he would have done today. So uh, you have that issue of the speech. When uh, high moral living, how about that one? Jesus lived in a way that he was willing to die for sinners, and he's given us a high moral example to follow. But when you turn to the example of Muhammad, you do not find a high moral example. By the way, Jesus, we're in John 9 in our evening study on Wednesday night. He comes out of dealing with the big fight in 8, walks out of the temple, passing by, sees a blind man, stops and has compassion on the man and heals him. That's a high moral. That's thinking of others before you think of yourself. You know what Muhammad did? He's nowhere near that. What can I get out of it? He, what, what is in it from my interest? Why did he attack the Jews, Jewish settlements? They had the money, but they didn't give him the worship that he desired. So he went over there and took it from them. Jesus never killed or robbed anyone. If he had, he wouldn't have been the Savior. <laughs> uh, by the way, if he had done so, he'd have been brought up on a trial and, and, and put to death. Because that's what the law required. But when we turn and look at the life of Muhammad, we find that clearly he killed and robbed people in the name of Allah, according to the Quran. How about directing disciples to kill? Lord never did that. Muhammad does. Taking another man's wife. Well, the Lord was never married. The Lord said, don't, it's, it's you know, you look over there at that, at the, you know, the coveting your uh, Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's what I was thinking about, okay? But you know what Muhammad did? This is one of the most distressing aspects of Muhammad's life. Maha Here's the story. Muhammad's adopted son, Zayd, had married a beautiful young woman with whom he was deeply in love. Then one day, according to early Muslim tradition, Muhammad saw his wife, um, Zayd's wife without her veil. By the way, you remember last time, why are they wearing a veil? It's hot, it's the desert, it's protection from sun, it has no religious connotation at all. It was just the way of the, the dress of the day. So he sees her without a veil, and you know what happens then, he lusted after her. 
He asked Zayed to divorce his wife and to give her to him, but Zayed and his wife refused such an outrageous request. Faced with the refusal, Muhammad had a convenient revelation from Allah, which now not only commanded Zayed to give up his wife to Muhammad, but also decreed that there was no evil in a father-in-law taking his daughter-in-law away from his adopted son. So Zayed and his wife were told that they did not have any choice in the matter. They had to submit to the will of Allah. So it's no wonder, and, and by the way, the surah on that is chapter 33, verse 36 to 38-ish. It's no wonder that this passage in the Quran has led many Muslims to renounce Islam. Interesting. Child brides, Jesus never was a child molester, but Muhammad was married to an eight-year-old girl who was still playing with her dolls, according to the Hadith. Unclean foods. Well, the Lord in his day, they had the Jewish dietary laws, didn't they? Muhammad, on the other hand, maintained that dietary laws of his days and so followers were forbidden to eat pork or drink wine. Now, what did the Lord do, by the way, through Paul? He made it all clean. It's all good to eat. But they, they can't. They, it's, it's, it's structured out. On dying for others. Well, Jesus Christ died for our sins. Muhammad died. He died for his own sins. He did not die for anyone. <laughs> this guy, that he, he, he's right to it. How about the resurrection? Well, Jesus did not remain dead. He conquered sin, hell, and the grave, physically rose again the third day, the same body, in the same body that had hung on the cross, just as he died for our sins. He rose again according to the Scriptures for our justification. But when Muhammad died, he stayed dead. He did not raise from the, rise from the dead. Muhammad is dead while Jesus Christ is alive. So obviously then the ascension in Acts 1, Jesus goes up. Where did Muhammad go? It, well, Muhammad did not ascend into heaven. The Quran never states that he ascended. Heavenly intercession. Jesus is now in heaven as our intercessory and Savior. He's the only mediator between God and man, isn't he? Muhammad is not an intercession or a intercessor or a savior. In fact, the Quran states that there is no intercessor or savior. You have to save yourself. It goes back to lesson one, the first 10 minutes or 20 minutes, where I told you when you deal with folks that believe in are Muslims, they are sinners lost on the way to go to hell. That's how you deal with them. You don't deal with them in the political arena. Because you'll lose. You don't deal with them even in the religious. What do you have to do to get to heaven? You got to do this. You got to do that. I can't do that. I fail at that. Well, you got to do this. I can't do that. I fail. I, I know a guy that says I'm not to do anything but to trust him. See, completely different. That's where you have to deal with them. Worship. Jesus was worshiped as the living Savior. But the Quran never speaks of worshiping Muhammad. That would be blasphemous. Blasphemous. Muslims will admit that Muhammad should not be worshipped by anyone because he was only a man. Isn't that interesting? How about a personal relationship? We teach we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, don't we? On the other hand, what Muslims, when Muslims speak of Muhammad in terms... On the other hand, what Muslim speaks of Muhammad in terms of loving him? There is no personal relationship possible with Muhammad. He is dead. Isn't that interesting? We have what? We have a personal, loving, intimate relationship with our Savior, with Jesus Christ, because he's alive. They don't. Jesus will one day return to resurrect and judge all men. Now, even Orthodox Muslims will often admit that this is clearly true. <laughs> but at the same time, it must be stated that there is no teaching in the Quran that says Muhammad will return one day or that he will resurrect or judge the dead. So clearly, the Lord and Muhammad are not on the same, they don't even belong in the same room with each other. Anyone who rationally examines the differences between the biblical Jesus and the Quranic Muhammad must come to the conclusion 
that Jesus and Muhammad did not both represent the same God. They did not live or preach like each other. On all essential issues, they were polar poles opposite. Isn't that interesting? Very fascinating. I got my joke, by the way. On the miraculous conception, you, you'll find a reference to it about Mary in chapter 66 and verse 12. And I'm going to say 12-ish because you're going to have to look for it. And it says, And Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste, therefore we breathe therein something of our spirit. And she put faith in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was of the obedient. Isn't that interesting? So they have what? <laughs> they got a picture there, don't they? That's in the Quran about the, the miraculous conception. The birth of Christ. The Quran mentions a conversation between the Virgin Mary and the angel of the Lord. And this is in chapter 19, verse 19 to 21. He said, I'm only the messenger of the Lord that I may bestow on thee a faultless son. She said, How can I have a son when no mortal hath touched me? Neither have I been unchaste. He said, So it will be. The Lord saith, It is easy for me, and it will be, that we may make of him a revelation for mankind and a mercy from us, and it is a thing ordained. Talking about the Lord and Mary. Now, that's in the Quran. That's chapter 19, 19 to 21. It's there. And, and that distinction sets Christ apart from other humans and messengers because he was born without any human embrace or relationship, quote unquote. Even the Quran supports a what? A virgin birth. Well, it's not in the, it's not in the Quran. Yeah, it's there. It's right there. How, Jesus spoke at his birth. This is an interesting one. Uh, the Quran attributes a, 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 this miracle. The, old, the New Testament has nothing about this. By the way, you know what the Lord did? You know what, you know what the Lord's first speaking at his birth was? It was a cry of a baby. Because that's what he was. He was a baby. It's chapter 19 of the, of the Quran, verse 29 and 30. Then she pointed to him. They said... How can he talk to one who's in the cradle, a young board? He spake, Lo, I am the slave of Allah. He hath given me the scripture and hath appointed me a prophet. Muslim scholars claim that when Mary's people went too far in reproaching her, she was silent and pointed to her child as if saying to them, He will answer you. Still another story told some by, some, by some guy, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, says Zechariah came to Mary during this debate among the Jews concerning mother and child, and said to Isa, that's Jesus, speak for yourself if you have been commanded so to do. And Isa said, I am the servant of Allah. He has given me wisdom and made me a prophet. So the Quran supports the virgin birth, but then takes a step the other direction and says he spoke. In, in the birth of Christ, who said... If you come back there to Matthew 1, oh, maybe it's in Luke. Well, in Luke 2, I'm, I'm sorry, let's do Luke 2. In Luke 2, you have the Lord's birth. You got Mary and Joseph and the babies lying in the manger, and they got up the scene. Verse 21, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. See, you're going to call his name Jesus, Mary. That's Matthew 1, okay? All right. But in Luke 1, when John the Baptist is born,
they come to, Mar- to, to Zacharias and Elizabeth, verse 59, and it, Luke 1, 59, and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called his name Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. You see, they're a tr- they say the Lord said some things and he doesn't, but they're attributing what Zacharias, by bringing Zachariah in, to the event of John and with Elizabeth, not with Mary and Joseph. You you see what they're doing there? They're they're trying to make something happen here that isn't in the Scripture, so they bring in Zachariah. By the way, he was not there when the Lord was born. He's he's in his town paying his taxes. So you you got some hokey things going on here. Um, Anyway, the Quran talks about Jesus having supernatural, that he had supernatural knowledge. In chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 49, says, I announce unto you what ye eat and what ye store up in your houses. Lo, herein verily is a portent for you if ye are to be believers. Muslim scholars take two positions on this passage. Some believe that from the beginning, Jesus learned hidden matters. While the others say that he was playing with children, he told them what their mothers and fathers did. He told one boy, your mother was, has hidden something for you. And the boy went home and cried until he received it. <laughs> you know, could you imagine being in the sandbox and the kid looks in and goes, I know what your mom's got you for your birthday. Nah, 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 nah. You know, that's what, that's, what, that's what they're saying. The other, the second reference to Jesus' knowledge is in uh, chapter 43, verse 57 and verse 61. When the Son of Mary is quoted a- as an example, behold, the folks laughed out, and lo, verily, there is knowledge of the hour. So doubt ye not concerning it, but follow me. This is the right path. <laughs> a knowledge of the hour is the, is the point, as meaning that Jesus knew when the day of judgment would come. If you recognize Allah as a separ- as separate from his creation in that he alone knows the times to come, you can comprehend the measure of the distinction to which the Quran assigns Christ, quote-unquote. Did he have super, did he know things? He's God. Of course he knew stuff. But what the Quran paints a, just a off-color picture of it. Jesus is blessed. In chapter 19, verse 31, by the way, chapter 19 is called Mary. You'll see it in, in print, Mary, that's the Mary chapter. <laughs> M-A-R-Y, her, and hath made me blessed whether so I may be. He made him a teacher of good, they say. Well, who was Christ? The Quran's got him as, uh, 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 said that the explanation of hath me blessed means he hath made me a teacher of good. Then it has him endowed with the, the Holy Spirit, which is in chapter 2, verse 253. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah. His words, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers. The substance of these verses, according to Muslims, is that Allah gave Jesus in his person a spirit, and this spirit supported him in his personality. But the Muslim scholars differ in their explanation of the Holy Spirit's supporting role. One quotes, The Holy Spirit is a Gabriel, and his support of Jesus was by being his companion and friend, helping and accompanying him wherever he went until he was taken up into heaven. Another scholar says the Spirit of the Holy Spirit it, uh, of the holy is the supreme name for Allah, and by it Jesus was raising the dead. And then even another one says, as it was the spirit which was breathed into him, and the holy one is Allah, so he is the spirit of Allah. In other words, they have no clue who the Holy Spirit is. But they attribute to the Lord to have what? To have a spirit. By the way, he does have the Holy Spirit. In, in John, he, he gets the Holy Spirit without, without limitation on him. Okay? He's got the Holy Spirit. By the way, in John, what the Lord says, I'm leaving and another comforter is coming. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. So the, the Holy Spirit there, it's just interesting that the Quran has what? 
has a little twist about him having the Holy Spirit. Um, again, uh, here Jesus talks about them being sinless. Uh, how about the Jesus is the Word of God? Well, John 1.1 1, 1 says that. So does the Quran. 4 verse 171, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was the only messenger of God, and his word which he conveyed unto Mary and a spirit from him. Chapter 3 verse 39, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a son whose name is John, who cometh to confirm a word from Allah, lordly, chaste, a prophet of the righteous. Now you see that issue of bringing in John? Because what they do is they begin to mix John the Baptist and the Lord together. And they begin to run them together. Um, to, that issue of confirming a word from Allah. One of their scholars states that John the Baptist was the first to believe in Jesus and to support his being the word of God and a spirit from him. Mary, uh, so in, the, in another passage in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 45, when the angel said, O Mary, lo, Allah giveth the glad tidings of a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, illustrate, uh, illustrious in the world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near unto Allah. The word is Allah, and basically the Quran agrees completely with John 1.1. That in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 14, and the Word became flesh. So the Quran is actually teaching that Jesus is the Word of God. It really does when you get through the mumble. How about Jesus is Allah's mediator and Messiah? So you got chapter 39, verse 44. Unto Allah belongeth all intercession. And then in chapter 3, verse 45, here you've got Jesus and Mary back and forth again. Messiah, just some clarification, is a Hebrew title for God's anointed Savior, Christ. And we understand that. And uh, Christ is the Greek equivalent to Messiah, and anointed. The Quran acknowledges Jesus of Nazareth as the only Messiah of God. There's an observation, quote, illustrious in the world by the ministry of prophecy and in the hereafter by intercession and possession and being one of those brought near unto Allah. Another scholar contended that according to some, that was intended here was the high place that Jesus was to have in paradise and in the society of angels. So they've, they're agreeing and he, he is the only, he's the mediator. He's their Messiah. Uh, he's like Adam. Chapter 3, verse 59, Lo, the likeness of Jesus with Allah is as the likeness of Adam. He created him of dust. Then he said unto him, Be, and he is. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jesus is a servant. Again, there in Mary 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 30 to 32. Got him quoted there. He creates in chapter 5 in ver, uh, of, of the Quran in verse 110, where he talks about, uh, well, he says, when, him creating, when Allah saith, O Jesus, son of Mary, remember my favor unto thee and unto thy mother, how I strengthen thee with the Holy Spirit, so that thou speakest unto mankind in the cradle as in as in." maturity, and how I taught thee the scripture and wisdom and the Torah and the gospel, and how thou didst shape of clay, as it were, the likeness of a bird, by my permission. You scratch that and you go, it doesn't make any sense, but basically what he's saying is that Jesus, Isa, has God-given power to impart life and to create and to do. He heals and raises from the dead. That's chapter 3 and verse 49. I heal him who was born blind and the leper, and I raise the dead by Allah's leave. Jesus died. We, we now come to one of the most controversial subjects among Muslims and Christians in the entire theological debate. It is necessary to affirm that Throughout the Quran, all support the fact that Jesus truly died. 
And there's a list of them. Chapter 4, verse 157 and 158. Chapter 19, verse 33. Chapter 5, verse 116 and 117. Chapter 2, verse 87. Chapter 3, verse 55 and on. One of the most crucial statements comes from the Surat 355. And it states, when Allah said, by the way, and remember, it's always in parentheses. You're always to remember this. Remember. And remember, when Allah said, O Jesus, lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me, and am cleansing thee of those who disbelieve, and am setting those who follow thee above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then unto me ye will all, ye will all return, and I shall judge between you as to that wherein ye used to differ. I am gathering thee. Some say that the word does not indicate death, while others affirm that Christ did actually die. As an era, by the, the many versions of this phrase, by eminent Muslim scholars make it, make its meaning confusing. No Muslim scholar will deny that John the Baptist was born and died and will be raised up. Here it is in the Quran, chapter 19, verse 15. Peace on him the day he was born and the day he dieth and the day he shall be raised up. You see how they move from Jesus to John the Baptist? They just suck him in there. However, practically the same wording is giving about Jesus in chapter 19, verse 32 and 34. And hath made me dutiful toward her who bore me, and hath not made me arrogant, unblessed, unblissed. Peace on me the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. And on. The, the controversy comes about that issue of resurrection. They have no problem to say he died, but the controversy is that he was buried and rose again the third day. And it, it's in the context... In, in the Quran, in that chapter 19 about Mary, it's about Mary and Jesus, the whole of it is. And, and, and what I did was I checked what I'm reading against the Quran, because I didn't want to. And so in, in Mary, in, in chapter 19 here, there's a whole introduction to it about what's being taught, said in the... Maryam takes its name from verse 16, that is of the quote you know, and so forth, and it just gives a whole history. It's kind of like a Schofield note. <laughs> Here's what's going on. And then Mary, and he, and he begins to talk in there about it, and, and, you, and you can read them. The reason that I say like 115-ish is because this guy's got a, I didn't correct him from what I was reading here. In other, and they use ISA, yeah. So, um, well, yeah, no, that's fine. It's okay, because let me make sure, see if I can. Because in Pictal here, verse 33, Peace on me the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. Such was Jesus, son of Mary. This is a statement of truth concerning which they doubt. If befitteth not the majesty of Allah, that he should take unto himself a son. Glory be to him, when he decreeth a thing, he saith unto it only, be, and it is. That's that creation issue and stuff. So it, again, I've tried to not be confusing, because that's very confusing. What's he talking about? No, they say none of this about Muhammad. That's the crazy thing about it. Yeah, it's like, okay, then what are we talking about? The whole thing is, exactly. Um, Jesus ascending and will return. Uh, it's chapter 3, verse 55. We're, uh, for time, we're just not going to keep reading these. Um, I do, I do want to, about the issue of the, of the return here, um, I, the references, it, it, this reference here in, in, in chapter 3, verse 55, it's literally, they literally borrow John 20, verse 17. For he says, I am ascended to my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and to your God. They literally borrow that out and, and use it in the Quran. 
And by the way, if you study this out, any detail about the Quran and the Bible, and if I remember, we'll do some of this, they, it does that quite often, where it'll just take from the New Testament and put it right in. And it, obviously, it's got to be in Arabic, so it's got to be, be jostled a little bit. Um, Mary 19, verse 33 and 34. Again, we, I just read that to you. It, it, it's, it's, it's there. There's a whole reference uh, list here, but again, for time, we just won't go through them. You can do that. Jesus is mentioned 97 times in 93 verses of the Quran. He is called the Spirit of God seven different times. Okay? Well, we're talking about Jesus. We'll get to Muhammad in just a second. Jesus is mentioned 97 times in 93 verses of the Quran. He's called the Spirit of God seven different times. They borrow from the Word. From the word. Yes. And Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what they did. They borrow from the, the Holy Scriptures to make something up to get them to, to get followers. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly what they did. They counterfeit the book and they, they spin it out to make things look a certain way. And you have to remember when that first, that our last lesson. He, he's one thing to the Jews, and he's one thing to the Christians to get what? The followers, and to get what they got, because he's going to tax them to death. Okay? So he's, we go this way, he's swinging with the tides. And the Quran does the same thing. Okay? Jesus, according to Islam, is one of the six prophets with special titles. Listed chronologically, they are Adam the chosen of God, Noah, the preacher of God, Abraham, the friend of God, Moses, the speaker with God, Jesus, the word of God, Muhammad, the apostle of God. It is obvious from the above references that Jesus Christ emerges from the Quran passages as well as the Hadith passages as a very formable, fascinating, and divine figure indeed. In fact, the Quranic description of Jesus of Nazareth stands second only to the Bible. The major problem in Muhammad's misunderstanding of the truth, of the full truth of who Jesus is, could be related to the fact that Muhammad's information came neither from true Christian believers nor the New Testament Gospels. Rather, it was acquired from Jewish fables as well as from local heretical Christian sects. Again, the agnostics and all that was there. Um, still one is uh, profoundly, uh, profoundly amazed at how close a figure the Quran presents of the true Christ uh, of the Gospels, our Savior and Lord, and He is absolutely more than a prophet. Amen. Now I want to give you a list, take a few minutes to read down through here, about Jesus and Muhammad. So Jesus and Muhammad. Now I was going to put this on a handout, and I just decided I'd just read with you. Jesus, His name means Savior. Muhammad, his name means praised one. Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary. Muhammad, born of, of man, <laughs> of Aminah, A-M-I-N-A-H. Jesus, no earthly father. Muhammad had an earthly father, uh, Abd Allah. Jesus was born about 4 B.C. in Bethlehem. Muhammad, A.D. 570 in Mecca. Jesus was raised by his mother Mary and his uh, adopted father Joseph. It's an interesting way of saying that. I, I kind of like that because <laughs> it's not his human, it's not his physical father, his adoptive father. Uh, Muhammad was raised by his mother, then by uh, Halima, the nurse, then his uncles and his grandparents. Jesus labored as a carpenter in Nazareth. Muhammad started as a shepherd then became a, car, a camel caravan leader and worked at the produce stand and did, you know, did all that. Jesus spoke in Hebrew, Aramaic, and probably Greek. Muhammad spoke only 
uh, 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 um, Arabic. Jesus was, liter uh, was literate, yet he wrote no books. When you think about that, he didn't write any books. Okay. Muhammad was literate, and he wrote the Quran. <clears throat> so the Quran didn't come from Allah, it came from Muhammad. <laughs> uh, Jesus uh, attracted multitudes by his miracles and teachings. Muhammad attracted multitudes by his teaching and sword. Jesus had to move to Capernaum because of his rejection by his townspeople. Muhammad had to move to Medina because of rejection by his townspeople. Jesus was never married. Muhammad was married to 15 wives at least. Jesus lived a sinless life. Muhammad prayed earnestly and fervently for the forgiveness of his sins. Jesus did not pray for forgiveness of his sins. He didn't have any. He's sinless. Jesus waged no war. Muhammad waged war by fighting or leading in 66 battles. Jesus ordained the death of no one. I'm sorry, ordered the death of no one. Muhammad ordered the death of many men and women. By the way, the first woman he killed or had killed was a poet, a poet, a poetress, poetess, and uh, her poet and her poetry was anti him in a major way. Now, she's not a believer or anything. She's over here in the pagan side in the poly, and she was nailing the mono, <laughs> and we'd fix you, and off the head went. Anyway. Uh, Jesus established a religion of mercy and love even for enemies, and he does. Muhammad established a religion of no mercy and the sword. Uh, Jesus established a spiritual kingdom, also a physical earthly kingdom. Muhammad established an earthly empire that, as soon as he died, did what? Fell apart, you know, okay? Uh, Jesus died by crucifixion in Jerusalem at the age of 33, Muhammad died in Medina due to no one really knows, but they say pneumonia or poisoning and so forth at the age of 62. Uh, Jesus arose the third day, emptied out his tomb, not, no longer found. Muhammad still in his grave awaiting the day of judgment. Uh, Jesus, the Old Testament, predicted his coming. Muhammad, no scripture predicted his coming. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 97 times. Muhammad is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. Isn't that interesting? That's Many of his followers, Christians, are known for their dedication, love, and caring for others. Muhammad, many of his followers, Muslims, are known for their fanatic dedication to war and vengeance, even for the killing of other Muslims. Isn't that interesting? And, and one's a religion of peace, and the other one is a religion of hate, when you get it out there in the marketplace of ideas. And the Christians are the haters, if, in case you didn't know that. Okay? Jesus is spoken of as Alpha and Omega. Well, let me do it like this. Muhammad is spoken of as a messenger, a preacher, a warner, W-A-R-N-E-R, -E son of Abd Allah, evangelist and apostle. That's it. That's the lead. A messenger, a preacher, a warner, son of Abd Allah, evangelist and an apostle. By the way, I read one, one uh, passage, that issue of Allah, that he used that Allah for dad, his, got it from his dad's name, even though it belonged to the moon god and all that stuff. Anyway. Jesus is spoken of as Alpha and Omega, Amen, the Ancient of Days, Bread of Life, Conquer, Counselor, David's Son, Door to Heaven, Day Spring, Eternal Life, Friend of Sinners, First and Last, God our Savior, Good Shepherd, Holy One of God, Hope of Glory, I Am, the Image of the Invisible God, Judge of the Living and the Dead, King Eternal, Life, Light, Living Bread, Lord, Mediator, Messiah, Might, and on and on. I mean, just on and on. They are not the same. They are not even in the same building okay so when you talk when you come to the quran and you come to the issues about christ 97 times they talk about jesus 25 there's a there there's a disconnect 
in what they're teaching and what they're believing to what actually the scriptures say. Now, what we'll find is the hadif kind of comes in and fixes some of that for them, okay? And we'll look at all of that in, in, in July seminar, all right? Okay, don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the tape. We're going to keep going, finish this up.